What's going down everybody? Welcome back to another Altered Art tutorial video. Today I'm using a little bit of a different setup with the microphone and stuff, so I hope it sounds as good. If it doesn't, I'm sure I'll find out in post and I'll switch it for the next one. Today, we are going to start painting. So I've got a card here, it's an island belongs to or it's going to belong to my good friend Aaron. It's part of a commission that he is getting me to do so I thought I would show you some of the basic techniques that I use. Uh, we're not going to do the whole card today but I'm going to show you some of the basic techniques and paint mixing and stuff so we're going to get right into it right quick and in a hurry. On Aaron's card though we're going to be using what do we got here we've got some what is it called true blue white of course black of course and some i don't know what else we got here probably some teal just to make it easier for me burnt sienna it's brown those are probably going to be the colors we're going to use for this card can you see it let's see if i can it's not really the color of the card the video kind of adjusts itself to make that's it it's from ice age it's a regular island. So I'm gonna tilt the camera down and I'm gonna open up all the windows behind me. I'm gonna get some water in my nasty cup and then we're gonna start. Okay, you can now see what I see. And I'm left-handed, so when I'm leaning over like this, probably you won't be able to see. And if I put the camera on the other side, when I'm holding the card like this, turning it, you won't be able to see that either. So there's not really a good way to do this. What I wanted to show you today was how to drop paint. Good thing it wasn't open. What colors I'm gonna be using and sort of how I take this brush. We looked at it last time. It's kind of beat up this time. You can see it there. It's like a number four, whatever. I don't know, I just go on how big they are. Like I said, I'm not like a trained painter. <laughs> and I'm going to mix some paint here and then I'm gonna put it onto the card. And we're gonna do, we're gonna do this sky portion or some portions of the sky here. So let's uh, let's get to it. What do we need here? We need some of this teal. I'm going to use this teal. Just a little dab and I've been painting today already. We're going to use some of this brown. I'm going to use a bunch of white and some black. And you're going to mostly need white and black in everything. And what I'm going to do, this brush is relatively clean but if I was wanted to clean it even more, I would do what I'm doing, but ex except the brush would be like wet with acetone and it would just wring out all the dried paint, but it's fairly clean. So what I'm gonna do is get some white on there and I kind of just like fan it out on the, on the paper. It's just computer paper. And I just kind of get it to what I think is gonna be close to like, sorry this kind of color of the sky. And I can kind of leave it on the paper for a while or go back to it. And it doesn't need to be perfect, but this would this would be what I would call like underpainting. I'm not base coating anything. I'm just going over everything, including the text, all kind of at once. And once you see, once my brush starts to get a little bit dry, I can like dab it. You can probably hear that on the microphone. And that's kind of, you can't even barely see it. Sorry, you can see my face. You can't even barely see it. But uh, once we get a few more layers on there, you'll see it pretty good. Sorry, there's not really any good way to, for me to show you that, is there? I gotta think that through better. Anyways, so we can let that dry and then we can, we're gonna do it again. A Little bit of uh, kind of the same mixture and I go back to the same spot so I can make it look kind of the same. See when you take too much black or whatever, you can kind of like put it in its own place. That's how I do it. I don't know if anybody else does it like that, but that's how I do it. I don't think there's a right or wrong way. And then I start to feather it into the painting. Just gently dab it in, tap it in, whatever you want to call it. I don't want to bore you. This is the boring part. But essentially you kind of just feather it in until all the lines disappear. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep doing, let's see, can you see that? I'm gonna keep doing this until all this line disappears and like this line, all that's gotta go. So on the left-hand side of the card, that's mostly just cloud. So I'm mostly just gonna take what's already on my brush with a little bit of extra blue 
I'm just gonna dab that onto the card and I'm still way too dark so I'm gonna just take white I'm just gonna keep adding white till it looks good and as I go kind of move up and down the card so I'm adding an equal amount of paint everywhere I go if I got too much I can just get rid of it and then just go right back to white in my same spot there and that's gonna make it really way whiter than it was. I can let that dry a little bit like this, or I cook it under the lamp a little bit. It's a little bit of a secret. If you cook it for too long, you'll warp the card, or the paint will bubble, or uh, you'll burn your finger if you're holding it underneath there, so just be careful. Once it's dry, I just go back, do some circles. It's called like dry brushing. You're just adding a little tiny, tiny bit of extra paint off your brush that's dry. It's getting closer and closer. And this kind of process, this blending process, is actually one of the more difficult parts of the whole process to, to make the paint look flat and to get it to match correctly because you are going from your palette to the paper to the card, vice versa, so many times. Especially on these old cards, you've got to contend with like the different textures in the original painting. Like this was probably done on a canvas and it was probably like big. So there's, there's some, what looks like texture in the art, but of course the card is smooth. And then because the scale of the original art was so much bigger, it's hard to emulate that, that texture. So I don't wanna bore you too much with any of that. I'm just gonna keep kind of sort of blending and working the paint into the card. And I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up and when it's done, I'll come back. Okay, welcome back. I did a little bit of blending or as much as I would like before we move on a little bit. I've got the blending sorta of done and I used a little toothpick and I went around the text. So where I'm at now is taking my little tiny, tiny, tiny brush and going back around the text because the toothpick is actually wider than like the, the text or the font. So you gotta paint a little bit of it in and then you gotta toothpick it and you gotta go back and forth, it's a little bit finicky. And then also I'm going to take kind of a, a smaller, not this small, but not as big as the last brush I was using either. And we're gonna get some real wet paint and we're gonna do like some clouds in here. And then we're gonna move down into where the water is. And that's, that's, gonna, be, that's gonna be the day. So I like to always start with a wet brush when I'm mixing because the more you mix, the, the drier it gets. You always need way more white than what you think. And this is a, this is a pretty complex color, there's like, like three or four colors in here. I've got my teal, brown, black, white. I'm not convinced that I have the right color. Going around the letters, you just dab a little tiny bit of paint on and if you're satisfied with the color, you can dip it back in the water and re-wet the paint that's on the paper here. You can see how much more paint I've got here than when I had the camera on last. And you always have to look at your color after it dries on the card as well because it might dry just a slightly different shade or as you add water and the, the, the paint starts to thin again, you might see a little bit more white. So you have to adjust your color. I find with these golden fluid acrylics, the more water I put into it, the more the white comes through. But as far as text goes, I've got paint everywhere that I want paint. And now I go back to a very sharp toothpick. They get worn down. This is like a pretty new one, the time consuming part. People ask, oh, why do commissions on old cards take longer? Well, on a new border card with the flat top line and the rounded edges around the text boxes and stuff, it's way easier. Because essentially you only have a couple, couple little tiny lines you gotta do and they're all straight, so you just use a straight edge. But on these, you gotta go around the text. For some cards, it very much uh, looks better to do it this way. Okay, so I've got it to a place where I'm fairly happy with it. And uh, I don't know, it must be just because I'm left-handed. It uh, A's and N's are just difficult for me. I don't know what it is, but uh, a suggestion that I would make, because Magic has gone with several different fonts over the lifetime of cards, make sure you know what font you're working with. So now, we've got some clouds here. See if I can get you guys to see that. It's kind of the shits. Right here, uh, right there. We're gonna extend that cloud out. And I could maybe do it with the bigger brush, but it's a fairly small cloud. And I use, this is a, a 10-0 lining brush, sure. And it's a fairly white cloud, but there's a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of blue in it. 
So I put some blue, I, I feathered some blue out over here and then I'm gonna put it back into this white over here. Just the, the blue that was on my brush, that is the, that's the only amount of blue that I'm gonna need in, uh, in, the, in the mixture. The same goes for black here. I'm gonna feather some black out, and then once I've got just a little tiny bit left on my brush, I'm gonna put it back into my, my actual mixture. And I'm gonna keep it really wet, and I'm just gonna dab it onto the card, and I can already see I've got way too much color in it. So I'm just gonna blow it all out with a bunch of white. Just keep adding white, similar to how I did down here. I'm just gonna keep adding white until it looks bright enough on the card. And the only thing I have to be careful of is I'm not adding too much water because then it'll look, uh, once it dries, it'll look like um, like when a water drop dries on your window after you wash your car, how you can see kind of like the outline of the water. You don't want that to be a thing. Sometimes you do, but for this one, that isn't what I want. And sometimes for clouds, I'll like take the end of my finger, I'll make sure it's nice and clean, and I'll kind of just tap the edges of where I'm painting to kind of feather the paint off of the card. It gets onto your finger. But uh, it, is a, it is a pretty good way to blend. So I kind of like where that's at. And I've got another cloud a little bit lower down that's got just a touch of brown in it. So I'm going to do the same thing. Get a little bit of brown and some water, feather it on, then mix it into the white that I was using. And same thing, keep it wet. Dab it with your finger a bit. Clouds are cool because you can kind of just make them whatever shape. So I'm going to bake that, see how it looks when it dries. That actually looks pretty good. It's like I've done it before. There is some more different colored clouds on here, but I don't think I want to try and emulate them just because we've already done some cloud work and it doesn't all have to be exactly the same. Like I've painted quite a lot into the card in like into the card in all directions. So the sky is kind of my own now and it doesn't necessarily need to look exactly how it did. What I do want to do is take this real tiny brush again, get some water on it, get my, get my same cloud kind of color, and I want to do this line right where the water meets the, uh, the sky, like the horizon line. It's going to give me a hard edge to paint water up to, and probably I'll go into the horizon line a little bit, and I'm going to have to redo it, but this gives me kind of like a safe kind of line to work onto. You can really water that down too and blend the top of that horizon line into the sky a little bit. That looks really good. So I'm gonna call it there today, for today. That's what, uh, that's what we're working on so far. So far we've kind of got like the top half of an island done. The next, uh, the next tutorial video will be the bottom half. We're gonna get the big brush again. We're gonna learn how to do some of the mixing here, some of the finer work here and here and then some little water droplets and the reflection of the uh, the island a little bit. Figured I'd tilt it up. <laughs> you can't really see anything behind me because of the light, but uh, thanks for being here. Thank you for being a patron if that's you. Thank you for visiting the Patreon page if that's you. Thank you for checking it out on Twitter, whatever it is. Next week we're gonna finish this card. Look at how good you can see it now, look at that. There it is. That's the island, it's coming up.